nugget is on the five tests that need to be done on all babies who are suspected of having Down syndrome. So the first one, which seems pretty obvious, is genetic testing. So the physical exam for babies with Down syndrome is very sensitive. Most people can pretty much look at an infant, most people that work in the NICU, and be able to tell very quickly whether a baby has Down syndrome or not. But we would like confirmation. A FISH study, which is fluorescent in situ hybridization, I said it, is a genetic test which is great in that it can come back pretty quickly, normally within two to three days. But what's not good about the FISH is that it won't tell you what type of trisomy 21 it is. It will just tell you whether there is a little bit of extra chromosome 21 or not. What it won't tell you is whether there's a translocation or not. So to see if there's a translocation or not, you have to send the routine chromosomes, the ones that we kind of used to cut out in high school and align all next to each other, because it's important to know whether there is a translocation or not, because that's an inherited type of Down syndrome. So in about 3% of cases of all patients with Down syndrome will have a translocation. And about a quarter of those three, less than one to 1% of those babies will have inherited the Down syndrome from their parents who are carriers. So all babies with Down syndrome should have some sort of chromosomal testing. The second test that needs to be done is an ultrasound of the heart, also called an echocardiogram, also called an echo. So this needs to be done whether a prenatal echo was done or not. About 50% of babies with Down syndrome will have a cardiac defect. Most of the time this is an endocardial cushion defect, which is basically holes between the atria, the two smaller chambers or holes um, between the two larger chambers, which are the ventricles, or just like a hole all the way down the middle of the heart. Most of these will end up needing surgery, but they do need some sort of medical treatment beforehand. So every single baby suspected of having Down syndrome or with Down syndrome needs an echo of the heart within the first few days of life. The third test is a complete blood count. So babies with Down syndrome have increased risk of having thrombocytopenia, low platelets, um, as well as polycythemia, which is an increased red blood count. But the real reason why we have to follow a CBC is because we're worried about a leukemoid reaction or transient myeloproliferative disorder. And that is where the WBCs, the leukocytes, can suddenly jump up. We're talking 50, 70, 90,000 WBC count here. Most of the time, that WBC count will slowly come down by itself, but in rare cases, that can end up developing into leukemia, specifically AML. It's still very rare, about 1% of Down syndrome babies will end up with leukemia, but obviously this is a lot more common than the general population. So all babies with Down syndrome need to get an initial CBC and then that CBC needs to be followed pretty regularly throughout the beginning of their lives. The fourth test that needs to be sent is some sort of thyroid test. A lot of babies with Down syndrome, a lot of patients with Down syndrome will end up with hypothyroidism at some point of their lives. But if they're born with hypothyroidism, that can be especially dangerous because you won't just get the general symptoms of hypothyroidism from it, dry skin and constipation and sluggishness. It can also affect the development and the general intelligence. So all babies with Down syndrome who are at increased risk of having congenital hypothyroidism need to have their thyroid levels checked. All newborn screens check for hypothyroidism, but a lot of them only check the T4, the actual thyroxine level. A TSH in those cases, the thyroid stimulating hormone needs to be sent because it's actually more sensitive at diagnosing hypothyroidism than just a T4. So if you live in a state where the newborn state screening only checks for the thyroxine level, then you have to send a TSH level separately. And the fifth test is kind of something that we send on everybody anyway, and that's a hearing screen. Babies with Down syndrome, kids with Down syndrome, can have very, very small auditory canals. So their ear canals are very, very small, and they're at increased risk of developing hearing loss at some point of their lives. And so this has to be followed very carefully um, and actually needs to be followed by a pediatric ENT as they get older. But a baseline hearing screen needs to be done when the babies are born. This is done on all babies before they leave the hospital. All other tests that need to be done on Down syndrome kids depend on symptoms. So those five routinely need to be done on every baby with Down syndrome. 
I hope that you learned something today. Please remember to subscribe and comment on any more topics that you'd like us to talk about. Thank you.